every single social problem is an opportunity. And how do we know this? Because there are social entrepreneurs working on every identified social issue already in a successful way. Social innovation and social entrepreneurship is about creating new paradigms and new ways of addressing old social problems. These are new ways of seeing uh, problems as opportunities and bringing light to a solution that may be right there under our nose, only that we could not see it. So basically what social entrepreneurs are doing, they're just bringing a flashlight to the room. Most governments think that uh, poverty can only be reduced from a top uh, bottom approach. They don't talk about outcomes or, or, or impact. They, they mostly deal on, 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 on output and on products and on services they provide. They said, we have trained so many farmers, but they do not say, and so X number of farmers have overcome the poverty line. How do we bring the talent and the passion of social innovators to government institutions so that innovations can be rolled out in the education sector, in the public work sector, in the health sector, in the housing sector. And many times social entrepreneurs have biases and have prejudices, and one of them is not to work with governments. We all need to be a little bit more humble, learn to work with government, uh, learn to work with multinational corporations, learn to work with a local business community, learn to work with other NGOs who may uh, have a different perspective. Social entrepreneurs and um, change agents who are involved in, in, in social innovation have many things to learn from government. And one is scale. I mean, if we are going to deal with uh, drinking water, we have to think at a national level, and we have to think for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years. In every single municipal district or national level, there are genuine uh, actors, government uh, employees, elected officials who really want to affect change. This is an opportunity to create an alliance between people who have access to big budgets but are constrained by the bureaucracy in which they work and people who have the talent and the ideas and who are free to innovate, how do we bring them together? And of course, where does business come in? What can we learn about successful business strategies? And how can we convince the business community that profit maximization is not their only game. You cannot have a successful uh, clothing com uh, company or a successful manufacturing company surrounded by slums. This is, this is 20th century, this is 19th century. If businesses learn that they are allowed to worry about the slum that is near their factory, and if businesses are trained to care and to understand what does it mean to have their labor force not having electricity, not having running water, not having good schools, not having sewage, not having roads, not having public transportation to come to work every day. We need to change the philosophy that businesses have uh, about what profit means. I'm very happy to know that there are many businesses who are beginning to see that. In Paraguay, we are working with uh, dozens of, of private sector corporations who have made it a point to eliminate poverty affecting all their employees. And with that, they are, of course, drawn into the rural villages and the urban slums, and they are finding that they have something, something that nobody else has. Businesses have the power of leverage. So how can we bring the power of leverage that the business community has to affect social change? That is what we need to do in the next few years.